This is Chuck Green, a motocross rider and father to a young girl called Katie, who needs Sombrex to survive. To complete 100%, I'll have to finish every case file, take out enough zombies to fill a coliseum, create some wacky weapons, come face to face with psychopaths, save survivors, use just about everything I can find, and play dress up for the platinum and all 51 trophies. So welcome to my 100% journey through Dead Rising 2. It begins with Chuck competing in TIR, that's Terror is Reality, a game show hosted by TK, which revolves around zombies. Zombies. I also meet this tit. Wife in Vegas. I guess you suck at killing zombies, otherwise she'd still be around. <laughs> we'll see him again later. I easily get first place and win. Side note, I'll have to play this mode online later for some tedious trophies. Because I won, I got some cash. See Cure on the TV. These are protesters against using zombies in the show. With the 10 grand in hand, I head to Katie. On the way, we see the twins. Hey ladies. And while in the lift, things quickly go sideways. The zombies have broken out, everyone starts to be eaten alive. I get to Katie, and luckily, she's fine. So I'll pick her up, and need to get the hell out of here. More people die, and once outside, I see people running towards a room. It has massive metal doors, and is now our new safe house. I then figure out that Chuck has been doing terrorist reality to earn money to buy poor Katie Zombrex, which she needs a dose of every day. Otherwise, she'll turn. The good news, Katie is safe. The bad news, I have no more Zombrex. I meet Stacy and she tells me where to find some Zombrex. While Katie plays her PSP, I head out back into the casino and to Roy's Mart Pharmacy. Inside, I find looters and have to deal with them. After doing so with my axe, I speak with my first survivor. After telling her about the safe house, she joins me. On the way back, I grab a book that increases how much food heals and then take her back to the safe house. I'll have to save 50 survivors for a trophy. It's now 4am and I have until 7am to give Kate the Zombrex. Time is a huge factor in Dead Rising. Survivors, case files and psychos all show up at certain times and if you aren't quick enough and miss that window, you're screwed or just reload a recent save. With that, I saved the game. You can only save the game at bathrooms, which I'll be doing a lot because Dead Rising 2 on PlayStation has many glitches and loves to crash. You'll see that throughout the playthrough. Anyway, heading back out, I can fully explore the whole casino. So I do a little prep work before 7 a.m. I go to the Silver Strip and get the leadership book. Since I'll be saving a lot of survivors, this book will be ridiculously useful. Any survivors that would have needed to be carried or helped along will now be able to run without any help. Heading into Slot Ranch, I found a hidden Zombrex. The game takes place over multiple days, so I will need all the Zombrex I can get. Moving into Yakanta, I'll come across my first Psycho and his pet tiger, Snowflake. Snowflake hungry. Oh, look what I found you, fresh meat. Whoa, there's plenty of zombies around for her to eat. No, no, not zombies. That meat is rotten. Okay, okay, not zombies, but I can help. I can get her some food, some steak. No! What's your name? Theodore, but everyone call me Ted. We just need to slow down and talk this over, right? No! Ted not slow! See, people not nice! Maybe Ted should have been called Snowflake, but whatever you do, don't say Ted is slow. He's really easy to defeat though. Once he's done, I can now tame Snowflake. I have to throw three pieces of steak as she's running towards me. As you can see though, sometimes the zombies like to get in the way, but with her fed, she is now on my side. I now need to take her back to the safe house, but before that, I grab another health book and save Lenny who shows me a shortcut and how to turn on the slot machines. It was now getting close to 7am, so I headed to the safe house, gave Katie her first dose of Zombrex and started case one. See, that wasn't so bad, Dad. You sure are Daddy's girl. Look, Dad, I got a new power in Mega Man. It turns out they're blaming Chuck for blowing up the gate and releasing the zombies. So I'm tasked with meeting the reporter and finding out where she got the tape. Before that, remember Snowflake? Well, she's now Katie's new pet. I'm not sure how safe that is, but it is what it is. Back outside of the safe house, I get a cutscene introducing the combo system new to Dead Rising 2. This is a huge feature allowing me to create some amazing weapons from some pretty average weapons. I'll need to unlock and make all of them for trophies. For now though, I made myself a spiked bat with a bat 
and nails, and another with a sledgehammer and an axe. Just outside this area was a couple who had been arguing and somehow lost each other even though they're like 20 feet apart. Anyway, I saved them, and since I'm right near the safe house, I just quickly take them back. Next, I go to meet with Rebecca, the reporter at the hotel. I tell her the video is fake and I was set up, so I head to the security room with her to check the cameras for the real footage. The door is locked, so she then shows me she is a close second when it comes to being the master of unlocking, and Chuck's eyes wander. Settle down, Chuck, mate. I find the place has been destroyed and the guard has been killed. The hunt for the truth is now on. I gotta get back to the safe house, and on the way, I met another survivor, but she won't come with us until I get her husband. Thankfully, he's just up ahead. I clear the zombies and he joins. Now back to Doris. She also joins. At the Royal Flush Plaza is an old woman in the kid's toy store. She's looking for a present for her grandson. She thinks the zombies are just toys. I'm not sure what that's about, but I tell they're actually real and after a little bit of convincing she also joins since she's old without the leadership book i grabbed earlier i would have had to carry her but you know since i've got the book we didn't have to back at the safe house with those three safe sullivan the guard blames me again but after all is said and done we continue the search for the truth and that finishes case one case two won't start until 7 30 pm which means i have many more survivors to save and psychos to defeat you may have also noticed that i'm already level 50 that's because i've played the game quite a lot beforehand the great thing about being the max level of 50 is I have more health which you can see in the top left and I have more inventory slots that you can see in the top right. I also move a lot faster. Without it I would absolutely struggle to save 50 survivors and take out all the psychos. So back on the strip I talk with a looter. He allows me to enter these shops where I can spend money on Zombrex and some very important items I will need in future playthroughs. But now though, let's get to saving. Going into Americana Casino, I find Stuart and Brittany who have barricaded themselves in. After slapping Stuart a few times with a briefcase, they both join. Also, while here, I did a little parkour to get another hit on Zombrex. I absolutely didn't fail any of the jumps. I now ran halfway across Fortune City for Welcome to the Family to save another two survivors. On the way, I made my first drink. At Blenders, you can combine two food items to make a drink that has an effect. I made quick step that allows me to run faster. I then saved Kenneth and Jack, saved a luscious lady who had a little bit too much to drink, throwing up all over the place and showing us uh, sweet dance moves. Bringing them back now meant I had over 10 survivors. Things are looking good. Back outside on the strip, I met someone very familiar. Yep, it's that guy Leon from the beginning and he's still a tit. Oh, I bet you just get rock hard thinking about me at night, don't you? He chops a survivor in half with his seriously cool bike. And I just can't have that. He throws me some keys for another bike and he wants a showdown and I'm happy to oblige. I think you're supposed to use the bike in this boss fight, but I have no idea how you're supposed to actually do that. So I jumped on the bike just to get closer to where he was and had him crash into the tree. Then just basically pummeled him with my weapons before finishing him off with my balls. <laughs> yeah, you're on fire. After that brilliant cutscene, I now have access to his bike and trailer. I can customize the bike with different things, so I went and got a cheeky chainsaw and made this beauty. But there's more. I went back to the first bike and grabbed some spray paint. On the way back, I crashed, but also killed 500 zombies. Back at the trailer, I added my new paint job. Fantastic. Moving on, I found these four mad lads barricaded themselves in and are playing a board game. After telling them there might be girls at the safe house, they joined. That was easy enough. Now, do you remember at the beginning when I was escaping with Katie? Well, I found these two in that area trapped behind some fire. I got the nearby fire extinguisher, put out the fire, and got myself another two easy survivors. A moments later, it was late. At night, the zombies are quicker and much more aggressive. Now though, it was time for another psychopath. This guy is seriously messed up and had completely lost his shit. The theme for this fight is absolutely badass, but I don't know how much of it I can actually include. Either way, I defeated him and saved Vicky, who he had tied up. Come on, brother. Get it. Oh, God. Right, so this guy, yeah, he basically just hits you a few times and then buggers off into the toilets. And then he'll jump back out on one of the uh, the random toilets. Just make sure all my survivors are over there so they don't get killed. Nope. What are they doing? Stop. All right, I need to finish him quick. Oh, so close. Come here. Where are you going? God damn it, I missed. Don't run away. There we go. Come on. Oh, there we go.
With my now massive group of survivors, I was running low on time and Case 2 was ready to start. I quickly dashed back to the safe house. Katie was sleeping and Stacy had seen some men moving things on the train in the underground. It seems I had a new lead, so I drank my quick step and ran to the tunnels. I saved and then, hey look, it's my old pal TK with his goons. My boy Chucky quickly got caught. So I took out the goons and then clotheslined this noob off his bike and then was about to chase him, but Dead Rising had other plans. Thankfully, since I'd just saved, I didn't lose any progress. But this is why I always save at any chance I get. This was, actually believe it or not, already the fourth time the game had crashed. But back to the epic chase. It's actually not very epic thanks to the bike's controls being absolutely trash. Luckily though, I perfected it and then did a sick jump onto the train, fought my way through more goons and took a moment to eat some jelly beans. Once I reached the front, TK trolls us and separates the train as he tries to shoot me. That completes case 2. I want to know what TK's angle is on this whole thing. But before case 3 starts at 10am, Katie will need more Zombrex. Right now though, it's 9pm, so we have a shit ton of time before then. While in the tunnels I snagged another Zombrex, I found Jard holed up in a travel shop. Unfortunately, he was infected. Luckily though, I have plenty. After giving him the Zombrex, he joined. I landed on this tree, which I honestly had no idea was even possible. Found Sven, trying to save someone at the strip. Poor Duggan, never stood a chance. But Sven did now that Chuck Green had arrived. With Sven on the team, I noticed tastes like chicken was active. So to the food court, I go. He was going to make me some food until he realised I'm not the reviewer he was waiting for. Once again though, another amazing theme song for the boss fight. After being beaten up, force fed and him eating food to heal himself, I could now save the girl from the cutscene. Or at least I can once I first saved Jasper, who's hiding on this roof. I got a little peckish, so munched on some pasta. Hopefully the secret ingredient wasn't human meat for this one. Taking the group back, Sven gave me another Zombrex, and it was now half 12, and the next case wasn't until 3am, so I tried on some clothes. Don't worry though, I'm keeping Sean's outfit. Did a little gambling, apparently I'm the luckiest person ever. Went to a peep show, not once, not twice, but three times, for a massive pee pee bonus. Got some combo cards. Tried to watch a film, but none were showing. Turned 1,000 zombies into paste with my bike. Saved two construction workers, and then we all enjoyed a rock concert. I used the word enjoyed loosely. I did like the ending though. Took them back to safety and gave Katie a giant teddy because Chuck is just the best. Now I just needed to wait until 7am to give her another shot of Zombrex. I give her the Zombrex. I still can't believe you were on that show. It's so cruel. Yeah, I know. But I didn't have a choice. And then I head back out and get a cutscene showing the introduction of Queen Bees. If I kill a zombie, doing this weird animation and catch the bee, and then slam it on the ground near any zombies, they'll all die. It's great for quickly clearing an area. It was now getting close to 10am on day 2, which is when case 3 would start. Before heading back, I saw these three lovely ladies that were on a shopping spree, and would only follow me if I was carrying the stuff. Even though I kind of didn't want to carry it back, it did add another three survivors to the safe house. And then I began case 3. I told them it was TK behind everything and saw people opening the casino vaults on the security feed. Rebecca left to check it out and I did the same. You might have noticed, I now have tons of cash. I'll tell you why much later in the video. For now, Stacy radioed me the locations where TK's lackeys were drilling. I took out some goons and destroyed two drills, took a time out for some well-earned pizza and entered Yakanton Casino. I tried to jump up here to get another hidden Zombrex, but apparently that pizza must have really weighed me down. So I gave up and two seconds later, the game crashed again. That's number seven. Made my way back to this point, this time without eating the pizza. Chuck being a little bit lighter, made the jump. I got the Zombrex, killed the goons and had some cake. Back outside was the final place. So I took the LMG, put it on my bike and got to work. After blowing up the van, I messed up TK's plan of a great heist. Rebecca did her best Frank West impression. Fantastic. And Chuck asked her if she covered wars. Have you covered wars or something? A cool little throwback right there. I then finished case three. It was almost 12 and case four wouldn't start until 11 p.m. But there's never a dull moment in Dead Rising. We had survivors to save and cycles to deal with. Up first, everyone loves Slappy. Look, are you okay? Do you need something? And we do, just for the wrong reasons. I mean, check him out. Yep, that's Slappy. You took the best thing 
everything in the world away from me. My girl. She was so beautiful. And we had so much in common. You brought the zombies here. You ruined everything. I'll never get a date now. Now let's end him. He hates water, or at least his gun does. So I grabbed a water gun, and then while he was stunned, I slapped slap it. I threw a keg at him, knocking him on his ass, and then finished him off. You're so beautiful, baby. How about that date? I'm coming to pick you up in just a minute. For beating him, I got this flamethrower. Just downstairs was another survivor. Oh god, what have you been up to, Lynette? <laughs> you dirty woman. But she needed a drink, so I went back up, grabbed some wine, gave her the drink, and she said she worked a brand new U, and it has a shortcut. The shortcut would take me from Palisades Mall to the Royal Flush Plaza bathroom. This is very similar to the shortcut in Dead Rising 1. I just kind of wish we got this one earlier. Either way, this will be super useful going forward. I took her back to the safe house, but forgot to bring a toy. So maybe the mad lads from earlier might have just found their girl. From there, I waited until 5 p.m. when here comes the groom appeared. Randy! Father. What are you wearing, Randy? Call me Randy. <laughs> Get on with it! <laughs> I do. Oh my god. Oh. Jesus. Oh my god. They did him even dirtier. He's called Randy Tugman. Oh. Alright, I got my lightsaber. He's bigger in person. Alright, this is working well. Ah. He's doing a lot of damage though. Should I use the... He's got Wolverine on his ass. Oh, 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 oh. I gotta be careful. Drink, drink, drink. Play the guitar. It doesn't really injure him, it just stuns him. Sorry, Randy. I mean, I'm not sorry to be honest. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. Happily married to a zombie. You may now kiss the bride. Oh my Chuck. Chuck. Come on now. Simmer down. Alright, we're gonna save Danny. And that was the end of Randy. As you can see, Randy really is Randy. He does have a cool ass chainsaw, which I of course wanted to steal. I'm gonna take his cool ass giant pink chainsaw as well. Come on. Oh, I'm gonna kill his wife. Let's try this puppy out. That's pretty cool. After taking Danny the groom back to the safe house, I then headed back outside and found Luss in the sports shop. And then the next survivor I knew would only come with me if I had a ranged weapon. So inside Royal Flush Plaza, where I just saved Luss, I knew there was a secret sniper location. After a little bit of jumping, I grabbed it and headed towards him. He was worried about losing his money, so I saved him and took both survivors back home. As I left, I got a mission called Stuart's Scheme. These are basically when survivors have a problem back at the safe house. If you don't resolve them, they might leave. They might even take other people with them. They might even kill other survivors. So I wanted to make sure I did these any opportunity I got. So I completed the immunity to avoid losing any survivors. For this one, it heard that I was the one that started the outbreak. So I just had a little chat with him and convinced him I didn't. I then waited a little bit until 11 p.m. when case four would start. I had to meet Rebecca at the nightclub. Once I arrived, I met with some familiar Familiar faces. Yep, the twins from the beginning. They had captured Rebecca and they were pissed. Come on, twins. Right, so I only need to actually kill one of the twins. So I'm gonna focus mostly on Amber. Come here, Amber. Where are you going? Nice moves. We do have to be careful though, because most of the health around here is beer and alcohol, and if you drink too much of it, Chuck will start puking. Let's see if I can slam attack. Oh, that did not work. I'll be right with you, Rebecca. I'm like, I missed. I missed. Got it. What have you done? I'm sorry, but it was super necessary. Other half. Oh. I'll never be complete again. Never. No, don't. Oh. There we go. And that is why I only needed to focus on one of the twins. 
Let's save Rebecca. So there's a chopper on the way. Eight o'clock. Okay. I'll see you at eight o'clock. Sweet. I need Zombrax as well at 7 a.m. So yeah, the next case isn't until 7 p.m. the next day. We've got a bunch of stuff to do. We do also get these badass weapons that the twins were carrying. So I'm going to take one of those suckers. But from one psycho fight right to another. Signature required. How's it going, Carl? Maybe you can sign for this. What? Special you want delivery. You want to sign for the special required. delivery? Okay. To do and I'm behind. You do know there's a zombie outbreak going on. This package requires that is some a signature. Dedication to the work. Buddy, if it makes you feel Even better, during apocalypse, is still delivering parcels. Anyway. Uh oh. Your Chuck Green. Actually. I have been looking for you. This package is a very special delivery. Just for you. Oh. Have a nice day. <laughs> Just runs off. Tick, tick, tick. Let's get rid of that. I love how during these cutscenes there's like no zombies around. <laughs> Nice. Fun fact, he's actually voiced by the same person who did uh, Ed from Ed, Ed and Edda, which is a stupidly funny cartoon. Alright, let's move. Oh, the zombies are back now. Alright, well I got my kick-ass weapon from the twins, so let's use it. Oh, he's got more bombs. Best thing to do though when the enemies are shooting you is to just jump. Because if you don't jump, they like knock you back. But if you jump and get shot, you take damage of course, but you don't get knocked back, which is nice. There we go. We got him. I need this for my daughter. Thanks for the package, Carl. <laughs> he's he's dying and he's still filling in the farm. <laughs> Oh my god. Delivery. Express. Next day delivery. Boom. And we got another Zombrex. Got four Zombrex. We don't have to worry about Zombrex at all. There's his vehicle. Seen better days. So the next thing wouldn't be until 1 a.m. on day three. So I had a little time to spare. And I felt like Chuck was eating of one too many pizzas. So I hit the gym. I boxed all the dummies. Pedaled on the exercise bites and ran on all the treadmills. Chuck was now fit, fast, slim, and ready to find the truth. First though, I found Richard at the diner, and he had eaten everything in the place. Somehow, I'm not sure how they managed that, and still wanted more, so I would have to go and get something. But I did have a coffee on me, so I was hoping that was good enough for him. Luckily, it was. Happy days! I then said there'd be much more food at the safe house, so obviously he joined. After that, I knew I would need to win at poker, so I grabbed one of the gambling books, to make it a little bit easier. After paying the 100 grand buy-in, the game begins. Since I don't have time to mess around, I just went all in, hoping it would pay off. And it didn't, I lost. So I loaded back up my save. This time I decided to get some other survivors first, and come back to this with another one or two gambling books to make it that little bit easier. In Plaza, I grabbed the second book and then the next survivors were in the Palisades Mall where I could also get the third book. To get these ladies to come with me, I had to pay them 10 grand. After I did, I slid down the water slide and then grabbed the other book, used the shortcut from earlier and took the group back to the safe house. I got another Zombrex. Speaking of, it was getting close to Katie's next Zombrex dose. I was undecided on whether I wanted to just wait and then do the poker game or just try it now. So I thought, you know what, I don't have that much time overall, so I'm going to make the most of what I do have. So I went to give it a go. I'd saved the game anyway, so even if it failed, I could just reload. With all three books in hand, I would raise every time, since going all in would just make them fold. And I lost. And I lost again. God damn it, I lost again! Oh my god, I can't win! Raise 12 grand, come on. Same suit, King and Jack, should be good. Oh, everyone folding. All right, Nevada's still in. That's risky with the two queens. Okay, we got a king. I think I should win this. Let's try and eliminate Nevada. Is he going for it? Are you doing it? Always doing it. Okay, if we win this, at least we've now eliminated Nevada. All right, let's see if we can get to an amount that'll get out Jacob. Okay, so if I do 26 on the next one, Jacob should get eliminated, assuming he loses. God damn it, he folded. All right, well, we got the ace. Let's see if we can get rid of Jessica. Let's see if she buys it. So we'll go with 78. And if we win, 
she's done. Come on. Yes, I think we've got rid of Jessica. Nice. Right, Jessica's gone and Nevada's gone. It's just me and you, Jacob. Could this finally be the run? This is, I'm not even joking. I've been trying for over an hour to beat this thing now. So I'll, I'll be glad to be finally done with it. And he's only got 22 grand as well. So he's just gone straight all in. Okay, we will match it. Come on, is this it? No, what? Yes. Come on, let's see what we get. We get an ace. We've all, I think we've won. I think we got it. Yeah, two kings. Yes, there we go. Finally. Oh my God, over an hour of trying to do this bloody thing and I finally beat them. I then quickly went back to the same safe house and wait for Katie's third Zombrex shot. We found out that Zombrex unfortunately had a pretty serious side effect that caused Katie to have a seizure and Stacy tells us her sister was also infected and taking Zombrex but gave up, couldn't take it anymore and just stopped taking the Zombrex altogether. Case 5 though would begin at 7pm so you know the drill by now. Time to save survivors and take out psychos. First I found this guy who thought it was a good idea to loot the ATMs for money. After following him around for a while he did finally join me. Next, I went and grabbed some plates and a saw, which I would need for a secret mission called Tape It or Die. These four are hidden in the back room of the sports store. Giving this guy the plates and the saw, he made me a combo weapon. We'll see these four again later. I got a cutscene of another four psychos. I'll deal with these muppets soon. First, I wanted to tackle a different psycho. I also found this half naked later, but she wouldn't come with me unless I was also half naked and wearing just underwear. So I'll be back. Now the task at hand, this guy who's taken the law into to his own hands. He was actually pretty tough. He would use his gun to disarm any weapon that I was using and then use a lasso and just beat the crap out of me. So I used my new combo weapon a little bit, but I wasn't really feeling it because I had to charge it up. And by the time I did that, he just stole the weapon from me anyway. So I just used my gloves. Nearby, found a guy called Ray, who managed to escape the crazy sheriff. I then stumbled on this little stand, which undressed me. Cheeky. So, I headed back to the half-naked lady, and she joined. We can now share in the embarrassment together. Running through the park, must be pretty chilly out there. One of these snipers hit Mr. Moneybags and almost killed him. With a sliver of health, I got him and the rest back to the safe house. Remember Jad? Well, he needed another shot of Zombrex. I found this guy crying about his art not being accepted, so I paid him three grand and he joined. The survivors in this game seriously have their priorities all messed up. I kept wondering to myself, why does everyone just keep wanting money? But when I think about it, it actually kind of makes sense because this is a giant mall casino. So I'd imagine everyone there is, you know, they really like money or they like losing money at least. So it kind of makes sense. But since I paid for that painting, I took it and it was now time to take out those four snipers. So I told Mr. Artman to hide in here so we didn't die. So these four snipers, mostly the damage all comes from them actually sniping you from the rooftops as you're exploring this, this open area. As long as you stick to the walls, it's not too bad. As for the fight themselves though, once you get up there at close range, they don't really do much. They're really easy to take out. The hardest part is actually figuring out how to get to them. First was Big Earl. I just jumped up to him and slashed away. Next was Johnny, but I quickly realized having missed the art hide away wasn't the best idea because I needed to enter the rooftops. It was classed as a new area with the boss fight, which meant if you ever leave a survivor in a different zone, they'll start slowly losing HP. So I brought him with me. Derek hit me a few times with a sniper and also Artman, which had me very nervous that he was going to die. So I made my way over to him and slapped him around. I gave Artman some whiskey to heal him and decided to leave the last sniper until later. I found Bill gambling, he'd lost 20 grand and wouldn't come until he'd won it back. So obviously I wasn't gonna wait around all that time. So I paid him, give him the 20 grand and then the cheeky little shit had the nerve to ask me for another five grand. Outrageous mate, honestly. I found Dean who considers himself a bit of a badass and standing next to these two, I guess I'd have to agree. After taking them back to the safe house, I got myself a sweet tuxedo. Why? Well, you'll see shortly. But now, let's go finish what we started with the snipers and kill the last one, these. I stayed close to the walls to avoid being sniped and then it was game over for him. I got a task called Bent Wood. 10 out of 10 wordplay there, Capcom. She wanted a golf club, so I quickly went to fetch one from the sports store. And remember that painting? Well, I gave it to Katie and she seemed pretty happy about it. So I guess it was worth it in the end. Also back at the safe house, played some more poker. This time it was with some extra spice. Strip poker. Naughty. All I wanted was to beat Jack in reality because I wanted his helmet. 
I swear, playing earlier must have paid off because I won this first try. That or it's just a lot easier. I don't know. I'm just going to take the win. Arthur's helmet. There we go. That's all I wanted. Sweet. I then made a mad dash for the one last survivor before the next case. Tammy the mermaid. And since she's a mermaid, even with the book, she needed me to carry her. Thankfully, I made it back just in time and bagged myself a nice trophy. Save 50 survivors. Willamette Mall security uniform. Beautiful. Now to the roof to talk to Rebecca. She got word that TK was trying to leave in a chopper. I'm not having that. And she was right. So it was our job to make sure he didn't. I took out the guards near the roof and saw him trying to fly away. Not on my watch, TK. I attach a winch to his chopper, stopping him from leaving. I had to destroy the chopper. So normally, you're supposed to use the items in the environment, pick them up and throw them at the chopper. But I'm not doing it that way. I'm going to use the cheese strategy, which is to use a toy gun. Yeah, I'm serious. Who knew choppers were weak to rubber balls? With it defeated, TK falls out of the chopper and it's destroyed. Mission is successful. As an added bonus, it burned all the cash he had stolen. So at least he's not taking that anyway. Where. TK being knocked out though from the fall, I took him back to the safe house. Not sure if that was the best idea, but we did cuff him to the bed. Something tells me TK would probably enjoy that. But at least the little turd isn't going anywhere. With that done, Stacy tells us the military are coming tomorrow, but Katie will need one more dose of Zombrex. I still had three, so there was no issue there. Do you remember when I dressed in a tux? Well, this is why. She wants to put on a show, and if we don't help, she'll blow up all of the survivors she's holding hostage. And even though I've already saved 50 survivors, I refuse to let anyone die. I first gave her a drink, now, she wanted an audience, aka zombies. So I grabbed some firecrackers in the back and attracted them. With the audience, I now went backstage to start the show. So I'm back there pulling the strings, pressing the buttons in time. And after the show, she decides to jump into the crowd. If we're quick, we can actually save her. So not only is this psycho quite unique in that you don't actually fight her, but she's also unique in that we can even save her. If I should or not is a another question. But after the performance, I couldn't say no. I found Andy and was trying to save him until this happened. Damn. Part of me wanted to load up an old save and retry, but I decided to just roll with the punches. I took BB and the crew back. We'll remember your sacrifice, Andy. Moving on, I came across these two comedians, or at least that's what they called themselves. After hearing both of their absolutely horrible jokes, I had to decide which one had the trophy. I was tempted to just keep the trophy for myself, if I'm being completely honest. But since I wanted to save them, I gave it to Royce. Why? No reason. I gave the loser a massager for a goodwill gesture, and he just cried. <laughs> Honestly, he was pretty good with it. Make of that what you will. But back at the safe house, maybe the comedian can give that tanned lady from earlier his massager, since, you know, I forgot to get hers. Anyway, while I was at the safe house, I spoke with Sven the medic. It seems some of the survivors needed some medical attention. And Sven asked me to go and get some whiskey or vodka. I didn't have any, so I quickly went into the mall and grabbed some. After giving it to him, he drank it. Like, bro, what? But he did give me some Zombrex. It was now day four, the final day, and only eight more hours until the military arrive. Back in the casino, I came across these two clowns. I watched as the magic trick went horribly wrong. Obviously, they weren't very happy I saw them fail the trick. So, it was time for a fight, obviously. They're both pretty easy to deal with. One has a rocket launcher, and the other one is quick with two swords. After taking them out, Roger takes out all his built-up rage on Reed's dead body. Kind of morbid, but you just can't question anything with these psychos. I then rode a dolphin. Then at 2am, I headed towards Family Feud. I found one of them on top of the hotel roof who was considering jumping off. I'm not sure where she would land because I honestly couldn't see anything down there. It was just a blue abyss. But it turns out two of them had argued and one of them had stormed off. She must be pretty stupid to do that though with, you know, the thousands of zombies roaming around. But it just shows once again how dumb these survivors truly are. Either way, I set off and I found her at the entrance fighting off zombies. I told her about her mum and then we quickly headed back to the roof. After a heartfelt reunion, we drove home like a nice happy family. On day four though, things really slowed down. So there really wasn't much left to do until the military arrived. So I checked up on the survivors. At the group, I beat at poker for whatever reason. Still hadn't put any clothes on. The mermaid lady was casually just chilling out on the table and hadn't suffocated yet. Weird. And the rest were pretty much just crying. At 4am in the safe house, Vicky wanted a plan. Yeah, I'm serious. Risking my life for a plan. So back to the art place. Once I'd got there, I grabbed it. And honestly, the plan was actually pretty cool. It's a revolver with like sprouts out of the gun. Not bad. Also, yes, I am wearing the famous Bruce Lee or Kill Bill, if you prefer, suit. But I guess with the shoes, I'm more Kill Bill. 
Anyway, I took the plant back and waited for Katie's final dose of Zombrex. I took her PSP and then she said something we've probably all said at one point or another. Dad, you didn't let me get to the save point. I'm going to have to restart. Right on time, we watch as they make their loud entrance on the cameras until this green mist comes out of the vents and turns the zombies into special zombies, the faster and stronger, and within minutes take over the Sarge's entire crew. Things aren't looking good, and to make things even worse, the military's plan B is to bomb the whole casino. Not on my watch. So, I dash to the underground to find Rebecca, and unfortunately, it seems Sarge has taken her and has completely lost his mind. He is out there rolling about, shooting, talking to his fallen soldiers, and locks Rebecca in the truck. He uses grenades and his assault rifle at range, and in close, he knocks me down, shoots me, and then throws me. After defeating him, he blows himself up, because I'm apparently a zombie, and he does doesn't want to be beaten or eaten alive by said zombie. But, you know, as I said, he'd completely lost it. I jumped in my truck with Rebecca. She was injured, so this came in handy. And then found two soldiers, which had actually survived the whole thing. As long as I had no weapons, they would actually talk to me. If I did have a weapon, they would shoot me. I told them this whole thing was all TK and not me, so they quickly joined. With everyone in the vehicle, I headed back to the safe house. While patching up Rebecca, I then got told by TK that it wasn't even him who framed me. It was someone else. Things go from bad to worse when somehow the zombies get into the safe house. With all the survivors I'd saved, I had a good amount of help while I quickly grabbed three items to power up the doors so I could close them. After closing them, I noticed Sullivan had gone missing and moments later, TK was trying to escape and got bit. According to Sullivan, he said that TK attacked him and ran off. I then hear on the TV that the outbreak has gone public and the government were going to drop bombs in a few hours. I check Rebecca's camera and assume the gas is coming from the underground. Also, TK is infected from the bite, so I gave him some Zombrex. I might regret that later, but you know, Chuck Green's a good guy, what can I say? But even after helping him, he's still an absolute muppet. At the underground, I find a secret area where all the zombies are heading, completely ignoring me and allowing me to walk right in. It seems my hunch was right, as we found the soldiers with experimental weapons, the harvesting bees. I fight my way through and find two scientists who pull guns on me, so I'll quickly take them out. I find a laptop with evidence, take a coffee break and head back to the safe house with the laptop. On the way, do you remember that tape or die group? Well, they needed my help. With them helped, now let's get back with the laptop. It turns out the company making Zombrex are behind everything, just like Umbrella from Resident Evil all over again. Rebecca says they're purposely releasing zombies because not enough people are buying the Zombrex. If they release the zombies, more people would get infected and that would drive up the sales. Moments later, my good friend Sully shot Rebecca. What a guy. Sully escapes and I need to go and end all this. After hunting him down for a while, I found him trying to leave the casino on the roof. So after all, Sullivan was up pulling all of the strings and TK was just being paid. So let's get this traitor. We can't use weapons here, so my strategy was pretty simple. Just keep drop kicking him in the face with my, you know, sick heels, just like last time. Except I can get in one little hit here and there when he's stunned. After the fight, he tries to leave, but gets ripped in half. Lovely. On the radio, I say I have all the proof they need and to come pick me up. They do, and I fly to the the safe house. All the survivors jump on the chopper. I honestly have no idea how they fit like 70 survivors or whatever it is I saved at this point on the chopper. Unfortunately though, Kate and Stacy are nowhere to be found. Back inside the safe house, I see Katie's backpack and the credits roll. I listen to the absolutely brilliant end game song. For anyone wondering, it's called Kill the Sound by Cell Dweller. They actually do quite a lot of the songs for the psychopaths in this game, so definitely consider checking those out. After the credits though, I get a radio call from, you guessed it, TK. The game isn't over. We've got one last thing to do. It's time to get the true ending and finally put an end to TK. He's got Katie and Stacy and he's tied them up. I have to run an errand for him, which basically means me running all around the casino grabbing these stupid items for him. Very similar to the overtime mode in the first Dead Rising. So I quickly went around, grabbed all the items that I needed. Honestly, didn't take too long. Once I'd got all the items, TK gave me a call saying, get your ass over to the arena. So of course I quickly did. And the moment I got through the 
door. TK stuns me and knocks me out. He hangs me upside down, but while he's doing his little stupid monologue, I free myself and climb up. I now have to fight him. He's pretty tough since he takes all of your equipment, so no food box or no combo weapons. You gotta make do with what's in the level. So I run around, grab a few items, couple of heals, couple of little attack items. Once I'd grabbed a few things though, I attacked him a few times and then I would just run away. He would do this charge attack, which I had major trouble avoiding. The arena is also one giant death trap and he kills me with it. So it's time for round two. I'm not gonna make the same mistake again. Another thing we do have to worry about though is Katie and Stacy is slowly being lowered into the zombie pit. So every now and then I'll have to quickly run over to the crank thing, spin it around and try and get them up a little bit so they don't die. So then my main strategy to avoid the charge was to just run around the little middle area because it would get stuck on the wall. After I'd realized that and I could just drop kick him and then run away, it really wasn't too difficult. And with that knowledge, I quickly finished him off with a slap to the face with my wrench and watched as he himself fell into the pit of zombies. Then that brought an end to my first playthrough and what a brilliant one it was. I completed it almost flawlessly. Rip to my one friend. I did get ending S, killed just under 3,000 zombies and saved 64 survivors and somehow earned over 10 million. TK should have probably just become my co-op partner to be honest and he might have been happy. With playthrough one in the bag, I will quickly go over the multiplayer. Terror is reality is back from the beginning of the game. It's a four player game mode where you take part in nine different events. Each match you complete is three events and then the final round with the bite. This mode has three trophies tied to it. The first two, Rising Star and Win Big are really easy. Simply win one event and then win an episode which is basically a match. Now the final trophy, TK's favourite. This one is a little annoying, it actually is very annoying. You have to win all nine of the events which might not seem that bad but you know since there's only three per match and they're completely random you have to not only hope the one you need shows up but then when it does show up you also need to win it so with all that random rng it somehow gets a little bit worse the mode is pretty much dead you can find one person here or there maybe two if you're lucky so this took a lot longer than i care to admit all that said i added another three trophies to the total also shout out to these two we worked together to help each other out and get the trophy that we needed ironically the last event was headache tk's favorite oh my god that trophy sucked i started up my second playthrough my task here be working on a few different trophies mainly father of the year and a score eight survivors at once and some other random things as well. So first I hit a tennis ball into a zombie's face from a final ranged weapon, stuck some fireworks in a zombie's mouth from a final explosive weapon, grabbed a burrito, taco, some jelly beans and a snack, combined the snack and the jelly beans into the blender to make a zombie, and then the taco and burrito for spitfire. Drank both and that's all drinks. Beat up 1000 zombies with my bare hands, treated myself to some cake, then grabbed the survivor book and a giant stuffed donkey to take to cater, along with a stick pony, a water a gun, some marbles, and a beach ball. I grabbed a giant bear, gave that to her, and the same with the giant bull. I tamed Snowflake again, then saved Lenny, smacked a zombie with a toy hammer, saved Lashandra, Gordon, and then gave him a purse, saved Chad and Doris, which rang my total up to six survivors, so I needed only two more. I quickly saved Esther, and then my final for eight survivors would actually just be Rebecca, because you recruit her during this main mission. Before taking everyone back, I grabbed another two giant gifts for Kata. I now only needed one more gift, but I'd have to wait until day three. So I went back into the casino and got myself some spray paint to paint over all of the Zombrex posters. I did a few and then took a moment to place 10 of these on zombies and then painted the last few. That's all posters done. Then face slammed a hell of a lot of zombies, tried to save these girls and got one of the weirdest glitches I've ever seen. Wait, what is happening? I can't move proper. Eh? What the frick? It was like an invisible... <laughs> what? There's like an invisible force field pushing me around. Revived a co-op partner, which was just me on another PS4 since I've got no friends. And then not long later, while randomly exploring the casino, I entered every shop. Then Art Appreciation popped up, which was the one I was waiting for, which would allow me to get the painting, which was the final gift for Katie. And then I tried on many, many, many different clothes. I found these comedians, but wasn't interested in them. I've already saved them in my other playthrough. Instead, I attacked a zombie 
zombie with a trophy or a trophy. Nice. Combined a chainsaw with my bike and sliced through 1,000 special zombies and wanted to make a secret combo. So I grabbed two orange juice, combined them in the blender to make the nectar and then combine the nectar and the bee at workbench to make Wingman. Another combo next, I combined the bear and an LMG and finally finished case 3.2, which meant I'd now completed every case in co-op again with myself, which I was glad to be finally done with because it meant I no longer had to keep running between rooms playing Dead Rising 2 on two different PlayStations. Now at this point, I needed to start making some serious cash. Why? Well, because I needed to spend 6 million in Fortune City and get my final combo card, which would cost 1.2 million, but more on that later. How am I going to earn so much money? Well, easy actually, a lot of gambling. Before I do though, I'd need to grab three magazines to increase my winning chances. With the mags in hand, I could spend the next one hour of my life gambling my heart away in Slot Ranch on this giant machine. And clearly the zombies weren't a fan of my gambling habits. Or maybe they just wanted to do some gambling as well. Considering they died in the casino, they probably did. I also just found it hilarious how it's a zombie apocalypse and Chuck is just out here gambling away. And finally, after all that gambling, I'd finally reached 6 million. And then I went into the next area and this happened. Honestly, I was a little bit annoyed because it just meant now I had to do loads of gambling again. Really tedious. Either way, after getting back up to 6 million, what will I buy with all this money I hear you asking? Well, let's go on a spending spree. First, I bought the SUV key. We'll need this for our third and final playthrough where I'll need to kill 72,000 zombies. I bought the night boots because, well, they look cool and they cost almost 2 million. And then next, I had to spend 1.2 million on the fortune teller. Not only would it help me with spending the money that I needed to get to 6 million, but spending 1.2 million would also unlock my final combo weapon. That's another three easy trophies in the bag. That meant there was only one more trophy I wanted to get for this playthrough. Stick them up. So I quickly headed to the food place in Yukanta Casino and picked up these four items and slapped them on this poor zombie. Now it was time for my third and final playthrough. With the SUV key, I could start on the 72,000 kills to achieve all of the zombie kill trophies. This would require though a full playthrough of just driving up and down the strip over and over again. This would take about six hours, six long, boring hours. But as I say, it would unlock three of the trophies, one for 5,000 kills, one for 53,596 kills, which was the exact same amount needed in the first Dead Rising. And then finally, the new high amount, the Zombie Genocide Master for the 72,000 kills. Oh, we are so close. Boom, there it is, 72,000 zombies run over, and that is 100% and the platinum in Dead Rising 2. If you enjoyed this one, you might also enjoy when I play through Dead Rising 1.